So one of the most common questions that we always hear is about mobile internet and staying connected while that you're on the road. Now we've done lots of different things over the four years that we have been on the road. Lots of different options that are out there. We're gonna share with you what we have done, but we're also gonna share with you something pretty cool about Starlink, which we have been testing out now for about the last four months and there's a pretty new cool update, so stay tuned. So when we first started RVing about four years ago, we really had no clue about internet and that we didn't even really need our own internet on the road. We just assumed that campgrounds had Wi-Fi like most of your hotels would, and that that would work for us. And we found out very, very quickly that doesn't cut it and that campground Wi-Fi is very unreliable and you need a better solution. So we started looking for what was the best option for us to be able to have to have internet on the road. So one of the first things that we did was we actually got a plan through Verizon. Now, part of the reason we went ahead and got a plan through Verizon is because our phone plans are from Verizon. We just felt like that that was gonna be a simpler way to go and so we have this hotspot that has Verizon service on it but we found out over the years that sometimes there are areas that Verizon doesn't have service and also because so many people are jumping on to the Verizon bandwagon that the service can actually be a little bit congested and we've had some issues as of late with speeds when it comes to Verizon. And so we really decided we needed something that was an alternative, a backup, especially because we actually had one of our hotspot units like this that completely bit the dust and that left us in a lurch. And so we knew we needed a backup in case that anything happened to this. So now in addition to our Verizon, we also got a service through T-Mobile. Now this is the router for our T-Mobile service and we absolutely love having this. We actually use this almost more as a primary now because T-Mobile has had great service for us in all of the places that we've been and speeds with this in most places that we have been lately have actually been faster than Verizon. Now, here's something that's very interesting too. We have found areas that this works that no other carrier does. So for example, last summer, we were in the Northern Wisconsin area up by Lake Superior. There is very little cell service that is up in that area, but T-Mobile had coverage and thank God that they did because we were able to stay connected. I was able to actually make phone calls with my cell phone over the wireless network to be able to make some inquiries when we needed tires. I wouldn't have been able to do that if it hadn't been for this. So this is through T-Mobile and we got this originally as a backup, but we've almost used it now more as a primary option. Now, because we always want backups upon backups, because we are working remotely, we do a ton of stuff online. We also have this through AT&T. Now, this is a pretty inexpensive plan that we have through AT&T. We do use this more as a backup up because what we have found is that in some of these areas where you don't have a strong signal through say Verizon or T-Mobile, sometimes there is AT&T. So now having three different options, Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile, we pretty much have service anywhere that we go that there's a cell signal. And if we don't have service, then it's just one of those that is a true dead zone because being in a true dead zone doesn't exactly always sound appealing. We wanted to be able to give this a try. Now, what this is, is this is Starlink. And Starlink was actually originally designed to be able to bring connectivity and internet to those more remote areas where there hadn't been connectivity in the past. So we signed up for this actually almost a year ago and we finally received our Starlink router and our Starlink satellite about four months ago and we have been testing it ever since. Now, part of the reason we've been testing this out is because we have wanted more of an all-in-one solution versus trying to go with the three different carriers, the three different plans, the three different routers. This is a potential all-in-one solution, but we do want to also make you aware of an all-in-one solution that we have recently found through internet on the go. And I will put a link in the description below because internet on the go has actually made a great offer for just our channel viewers where you can save $50 off of one of their routers using the code GLAMPER20. So all of that will be at the link in the description below. But the nice thing about internet on the go 
is that you can actually choose up to two carriers. So kind of like I talked about with this Verizon where it can be congested in some areas or just not work very well in some areas. Perfect example of that is in the Florida Keys. Verizon does not work very well, but T-Mobile works great. So with Internet on the Go, you can choose up to two carriers. They have Verizon, T-Mobile, or AT&T available. You choose which two carriers that you want SIM cards for. They plug it into the router. They do all of the setup. You literally take it out of the box and use it and you are ready to go. So that's a nice all-in-one solution that we have found that is out there, that is available on the market, that we are personally recommending for people that come to us and ask us about that all-in-one solution. So one thing that I do want to mention about the solution from Internet On The Go is that it does automatically switch between carriers. So if you choose, say, Verizon and T-Mobile, for example, as the carriers that you want to have for your particular router, it will automatically switch. If you're in an area where Verizon service isn't available, or the signal is not strong, it automatically switches over to that T-Mobile and vice versa. So it's very, very seamless, very, very what I like to call dummy proof. You can kind of set it and forget it. Put it in my machine and set it and forget it. And you don't even really need to do the setup so much because they're doing that for you. You just put it where you want it and connect and go. Now, Starlink, if you've got it, great. If you don't, there's a couple of tricks of the trade that I'm gonna share with you. But first, I wanna take a minute to thank the sponsor of today's video, campgroundviews.com. Now we love campgroundviews.com for planning our trips now to be able to use their virtual campground tours to tour a campground before we actually book that site. We've stayed at a lot of national park campgrounds and state park campgrounds where once that we've actually arrived and checked into the site that we have, we realize, oh my gosh, that site over in that other part of the campground, that would have been a much nicer site than this one and it costs the same amount of money. So with campground views, we can take those virtual tours, we can see what the best sites are before we make our selection in booking. We'll have a link in the description below for campgroundviews.com with a special discount for our viewers as well. Back to Starlink and some exciting updates that we wanna share with you. So now Starlink wasn't originally designed to necessarily be a mobile solution. It was really designed more for people that lived in rural areas that hadn't had internet before to be able to get internet service. But lately, we have found out some exciting things which we're gonna share with you. So when we originally got our Starlink, it took about six months for us to be able to be eligible to receive it with service in the area where we put our service address. Now, a lot of people were able to kind of hack the system by changing their service address to where they were going to be in their RV to be able to have Starlink work for them in those specific areas. Now, you have to understand the way that this system works is through ground base stations communicating with satellites in the sky. And so there there has to be those types of dynamics in a specific area that you're in to be able to get the signal to your little dish or the new ones called dishy to receive that particular signal. So there was this whole rigmarole of changing service addresses every time that you moved, hoping that there was going to be an open cell within that particular geographical location to have service. Well, we've been testing out our own Starlink and an exciting new thing has come about. And we've got an exciting new accessory now to help out with Starlink on the RV that we're gonna show you in just a few minutes as well. But what we have found is something called roaming now seems to have been enabled in the Starlink system. So basically what that means is we have been able to take our Starlink system with us away from our home base service address as we have been traveling, set it up, and get service without having to make that address change. Now, that is pretty exciting because in the past, the only way to be able to do that kind of an on-the-go form was to change the service address and you ran a risk of then not coming back to an open cell with that service address that you had originally put in. But the great news is, is it's getting more and more improved and you have the ability now to take it with you and set it up where you're at. 
Now, one thing I want to make clear is that this is not a actual on-the-go solution, meaning you can't set up your Starlink satellite on the roof of your RV and get service as you're actually driving down the road. You have to be in a physical location, not moving to be able to get that particular service. Most of us don't necessarily you know, jump on the internet while we're on the road anyway. So you can get an idea of where that the Starlink service is actually available by checking out the Starlink coverage map, which they now have available and we'll have a link in the description below to be able to check out that particular coverage map. Now Starlink could be the all-in-one internet solution that we have been looking for for quite a while, but the jury is still out. So we are still hanging on to our other forms of mobile internet, which we talked about earlier, until that we have been able to prove this out more. So you're definitely gonna wanna hit that subscribe button if this is something that you're interested in because we're gonna keep you updated all summer long as we travel throughout the United States and let you know where we have service. And if we don't have service anywhere, we'll be bringing you those updates. Now I wanna show you a really cool accessory that Flagpole Buddy just sent us, especially for the RV, especially for the Starlink satellite. And they actually make a pole specifically with a Starlink mount to hold the dishy satellite. Now, this is a great alternative to what we had been doing, and that was just setting our Starlink dish on the roof of the RV because we happened to be in an area where there was quite a bit of wind, and guess what? Yeah. Our dishy got blown off the roof and thankfully it survived with no damage. Thanks, it was built very, very well, Starlink. However, we don't necessarily need that to happen or want that to happen again. So this particular pull from Flagpole Buddy has been a great solution. And we will have a link in the description below for this specific pull. Now, the other great thing too is that Flagpole Buddy actually makes flagpoles and the install process for the brackets on the ladder was super simple. Ben did it within like five minutes and our kids have actually been enjoying flying some of their favorite flags off of the RV when we don't have Starlink set up. So now if you are interested in getting a Starlink system, the best thing that you can do right now is to jump over to the Starlink website and go ahead and sign up to be put on the waiting list. Now, we've been getting feedback from a lot of people that they're out till about 2023, but we've also heard that there are a few hacks. So what we have heard, and we had a similar experience ourselves last summer, is that if you find a place where you can put in a service address that shows available and put in a shipping address different than that service address, there's a good chance that you could get it sooner versus later. Now, it's kind of hit and miss kind of a guessing game and obviously you want to make sure that it is a legitimate address that you can say is associated with you somehow so what we did last summer is we actually had a relative in South Dakota we were visiting for the summer we put in that address we could have gotten it shipped to us that week but we wanted to wait till we got back to our home base and just didn't want to mess with it all during those travels so some hacks that you can try if you're trying to get it sooner than later it also does seem that Starlink has some sort of selection process that nobody really knows what the criteria is. Starlink kind of is not forthcoming with a lot of information just because things are so new. So that's where it's great to subscribe to channels like ours, to look at Facebook groups, lots of information that's out there that you just have to find out by trial and error when it comes to using Starlink. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about what Starlink is and how it works, we did do a video a few weeks back and you can take a look at that right up here. Don't forget to subscribe for future updates and more RV living tips. If we don't see you out on the road or around the campground, we'll see you in the next video.